So today we're going to be looking at inheritance in Blazor. So while Blazor has fantastic features to compartmentalize your UI by using components and having components within components, there's still room to leverage the power of inheritance in your Blazor application. So let's say you have some common functionality that you want all your components to share. Inheritance is a fantastic way to achieve this. Let's get into the demo. Let's say we wanted all the pages in our application to have a property called page ID. Instead of manually creating that on each of our Blazor components, we could create that property on our base class and have all our pages inherit from that base class. So let's go and do this. I'm gonna create a, a new folder here. I'm just gonna call it base, and we're going to create a new class, and we're going to call it page base. I'm gonna inherit from component base doesn't recognize it. I'm going to ask Visual Studio to find it. There we go. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to declare a public property and we're going to call it uh, my page ID. In our counter page, all we need to do to actually utilize this uh, is we need to include the inherits uh, tribute and page base and we have to specify a using statement. And now we should have access to our ID. So we can say page ID and give it the razor attribute. And now we will have access to our inherited property. Let's say we wanted to go and set that property when we initialize the page for argument's sake. Overrides on initialized async. Set my page ID equals to one, one, one. You can run this, and there we have a page ID of one, one, one. If you prefer your code and UI to be separated, we can go and move this code to the code behind. We can then extract that, move it to the code behind, and um, this works exactly as you would expect it. You can be more explicit about it, and here you can actually specify that the page inherits from page base. So we can add the using statement to make sure it understands where that is. That just makes it a bit more explicit if you prefer that sort of thing. Right, but the coolness factor here is um, you can go and uh, actually override the, the functionality of the uninitialized async here right in the base class. And let's say, for example, we wanted to set the value of my page equals to 999. So if you want to make sure that your code in your base class runs from your events from the page event lifecycle, specify whatever code you want in your base class and just make sure you call that same uh, base event either before or after your your code that your your custom code that you're adding to your derived code. So here for example, we could await this if I run this we'll first be running our code in our base class, which is the 999, followed by the 111, which is why you don't see it. If I remove this in our, let's just remove that. Reload. We get the 999. If you find yourself wanting to do this on uh, slightly older Blazor applications where the code behind is separate from uh, the Razor section of the Blazor page. Uh, back then when you had to explicitly specify that the partial class, the, uh, the code behind was inheriting from component base. If you get this, you may have a situation where it moans saying that um, you have a partial de declarations and specifies the different uh, base class and, and what that means is it means that the razor page is inheriting from one class and the code behind is inheriting from another class so just be aware of that nowadays you can just leave this out um, completely and it'll build so there you have it easy really simple powerful way to uh, include um, functionality across your whole application and having your code all in one place so that's it uh, thank you for watching and i'll see you in the next video